at 2 o'clock is our spring homecoming. So come home to the 1604 campus. It's just going to be a great time. You see uh, what started today. Patrick, Pat, Pastor Patrick was very meticulous in his planning. Yeah, he had prayed to God that the rain would come and the wind would come to get rid of that oak uh, that was starting to come in the air. And we got a beautiful day outside. So we look forward to seeing you here on the 1604 campus. A great time of food and fun and fellowship. We are Methodists. We do like to eat. Uh, so there are going to be a lot of activities. So come have a good time. Come home with us here on the 1604 campus. Um, oh, there we go. Nope. If we can go to the next slide. Uh, remind you about our Easter services. Uh, starts here at 720. Again, in Methodist tradition, we're going to have a sunrise service. Sun comes up at 719 on Easter Sunday. Uh, and also, uh, we'll have our service outdoors. Uh, if you're here, you know we have about 150 chairs. Uh, you may not see that online. Um, so outside, though, we're going to have the sunrise service, no limits. So we encourage you to come. And as an encouragement to you, we will have breakfast tacos. So come. Uh, as Jesus comes out of the tomb, we'll have breakfast tacos, 7.20 in the morning. Also, uh, we have our um, drive through service. So we're going to have communion as part of all of our Easter Sunday services. If you aren't able to come in person, uh, as you come through, you'll be able to receive the communion elements at our drive through But as you come on the campus uh, next Sunday, uh, here are the items that we're asking you to bring for Second Shift Ministries. It's important for us to get prepared for the summertime and peanut butter and jelly and tuna fish and those kind of things that we're trying to help uh, families for the kids for the summer, for all the, the, the areas that we work out of the ministry center. So come with these items. Uh, come with a joyful heart for the Resurrection Sunday and uh, just have a great time. So that's the life of the church. A lot of things going on. Always check our website be on, with us on social media. But now let's still our hearts. Let's hear God's word for us today as it is sung, sung spoken, and preached. Let us worship the Lord. Well, good morning and uh, glad that y'all can be with us, whether in person or online. If you are new here, my name is Abel Stewart. I'm the worship director and it is Palm Sunday, so happy Palm Sunday. One of the things we shout on Palm Sunday is Hosanna, and what that means is save us. That's kind of a funny thing to shout at somebody, but it's, it's an expression of praise in biblical times that I trust that you that I'm shouting that to has the power to be able to save me. And so as we learn about Jesus, who is the lion and who is the lamb, for both of those reasons, Jesus has the power to save us, so we shout Hosanna and all that. So as you can, let's stand and let's praise.
So Palm Sunday marks the, uh, the beginning of Holy Week, an entrance into Holy Week. And uh, Palm Sunday is always kind of a funny day because on this we have the hosannas, we have the palm branches, we have the celebrations, but we're also looking toward the week that points us to the cross. And it's also kind of a heavy time in the life of the church when we remember that deep, profound love that Jesus showed for us in doing that. The common thread that holds both those things together is the story of God's love and the story of God's grace. And so this next song is about that. And so I would just invite us as we're entering into this time of Holy Week, think about that. Think about the story of grace. And our topic for today is the road narrows as we're focusing in on this Holy Week. Remember that story of God's grace and may it transform our hearts. I heard about amazing grace, your holy love that fills this place, and Jesus, how we find it all through you. I feel this world of brokenness, the sticks and stones we've spoken yet, my broken heart and whisper. I 
comes to a life of faith, embracing love, rejecting hate, to walk the road of grace that points us to you. Now let us bear the cross of love, the sacred power from Christ above, a Holy Ghost inspired. in D.C., one of our tours there, I was teaching third and fourth grade Sunday school, and in our fellowship hall, we had a picture of, uh, of the triumphal entrance of Jesus into Jerusalem, and so on Palm Sunday, I gathered the kids around, and we, we looked at the picture, and we, we talked about the picture and all of the imagery that came from it, and how they shouted, Hosanna, and as Abel has said, that is, save us. And you know, I, I think that today, we still shout, Hosanna. We shout out that to Jesus to save us, to save us from our, the medical issues that we're going through, to the financial issues that we're going through. Save us from the emotional issues, the relational issues, the issues that are known between us and him, maybe those that are around us, and maybe those that we keep locked in our heart. So during this time of prayer, I encourage you to shout Hosanna, to shout out to Jesus to save us as only he can for what is happening in our life. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. God, hear our cry of Hosanna. Hear us as we cry to save us. Father God, you have gone to the cross and you have saved us from that eternal, gave us that eternal salvation. You have, you have gone to the cross on this, this week that we celebrate that, that journey for you, that week that we mourn that journey for you. Father God, we sing Hosanna with one another and praise you and thank you for saving us for those things that are impacting us here on this earth, that are, that are just weighing us down, keeping us from that wholeness that you have called us to have. Father God, we shout Hosanna. Be with each of us as we, we cry out to you today and every day. Father, as we welcome you with our own open hearts and our cloaks and our palms. Father God, we love you. We praise you. Father God, we give you glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now we'll have Catherine Reed for our children's moment. Good morning, Northern Hills. Good morning to you who are worshiping with us here in person, and good morning to you who are worshiping with us at home. We are blessed to be all together this morning. So as you will hear in the scripture that we're going to uh, listen to Brady read us in just a little while, there's a word that the children who've been doing Bible study with me on Wednesday nights know really, really well, because we've been talking about it all year long, and that word is reconciliation. I see a couple of y'all who are in my Wednesday Bible study who know exactly what I'm talking about. So we've been talking about the word reconciliation. We've been reading Ephesians to figure out what does that actually mean. And the way that our Bible study talks about it is that it's God's way of turning enemies into friends. And today we're going to hear more about the reconciliation that happened when Jesus went to the cross. 
Now we know that Jesus took our place. Instead of us having to clean ourselves for our sin, the thing that made us not a very good friend to God, Jesus took responsibility for all of our sin, and he called us friend so that we didn't have to pay for it. And so as we think about reconciliation, we think about the fact that God has called us friend and made a way for us to do that so that we didn't have to walk a hard road. Now today we're talking about a narrow road sign, and as Pastor Patrick talked about in the first service, it does remind me of when I'm going hiking or I'm going biking, and the path is really, really small, and there's hard rocks to get over, and this reminds us that the path that Jesus took to the cross was a hard one. It was hard to go, it was hard to walk, he knew what was coming, but he also did it because he called us friend, because he was the one who reconciled us back to God. And that means that we don't have to walk that same path because Jesus did it for us. So as you go about your day, families, and you're driving around, you may see a narrow road sign somewhere around you. Talk about the ways that you know God is your friend. Talk about the ways that you know that Jesus calls us friends so that we didn't have to walk the same hard road that he did. That's my challenge for you this week. Let's pray together and ask for God's help with that. Will you pray with me? Father, I thank you that you love us so much that you sent Jesus here who knew that his road he would walk would be hard, that he knew at the end of it was the cross, but on top of that, he knew that he called us friend and wanted to take all of that sin for us so we didn't have to walk the same narrow road that he did. Remind us that because Jesus calls us friend, that we learn to live like Jesus, to treat others like Jesus, and to love other people like Jesus. Remind us this week, every time we see a narrow road sign, that you call us friend and that you reconcile our relationship. We love you, God. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, everybody, if you are in second grade and younger and want to come back to the children's wing with us, you can meet me over at this door. Do you have cookies? Not today. No cookies today. <laughs> but you should still go if you're uh, second grade or younger. So as we come to this time of offering, I'd like to remind you that if you're in person, we have offering baskets uh, at the doorway. And if you're online, uh, as well as those that are in person, remind you of our Gift Plus app. Uh, it is a great way for us to stay uh, connected through our tithes and offerings. And will you join me in prayer now for that offering? Father God, we thank you for the hands who have delivered today's tithes and offering. Father, we know that all that we receive is a gift from you. And Father, we're just, uh, with whatever that amount is, Father, we know that it is a gift, and we are just so thankful for it. Father, we celebrate that, and we celebrate now returning it so that we can continue in ministry the way that you at Northern Hills have called us, both near and far. Father, to reach, teach, and love so that you are glorified in all that we do. Father God, we thank you and praise you, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, here are today's scripture reading for, uh, for us by Brady. Good morning, Northern Hills family. My name is Brady Weeks, and our scripture reading for today is from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 to 21. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, the new is here. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ, and gave us the ministry of reconciliation that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors. As through God, we are making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him, we might become the righteousness of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Brady. I think you're home, and I want to tell you thank you. And what I'm so help, uh, happy about it is if you can notice that he's reading his Bible he just received last week because it was the third uh, great Bible. So I believe that Brady is probably going to be the president of the United States one day. So whenever that happens, I'm very glad to know that this country will be led by a very strong Christian. While I have other ones in here that are going to be engineers or something like Mr. Bra um, I'm looking at you, brother, over there, uh, creating a lot of Legos and things like that. So you have some Legos in there because we're inviting you 
to the children to participate in worship by creating something really awesome about what you heard on the sermon. Because some of them actually are telling me that they pay more attention to your Legos than to my sermon. So probably you're going to be also a preacher one day, my dear brother. So we're thankful for the participation of all the kids and youth in our church. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we are coming to you today. We are coming in this Holy Week. And Lord, we just pray that through the message that we hear today, may be your spirit the one who speaks to all of us and through all of us. And may your spirit bring hope to our hearts. It is in your name that we pray. Amen. We have been learning about these uh, signs of Lent season and all of these different um, signs and how all of them remind us something of this time that we're walking through Lent. And the one that we're uh, having today is this one of the narrow road. And um, perhaps the best way I learned about this road and how important it is to have that kind of sign was through a testimony of one of the members of one of our churches in Ohio when she stood up and gave thanks to God because of how her father was protected from an accident. And what happened is that his father, her father was a truck driver. And one day he came to a place where there was this very narrow road and it was in a bridge. And he went down from the truck and he was trying to see, it was more than a truck, it was a trailer. And he was trying to see if he was going to make it or not through that bridge. And it was at night. And um, she said how the father said this story of from nowhere there was this man who came and walking in the middle of nowhere and said, if you go with that trailer in the very middle of the road, you're going to make it. Don't, don't go a little bit right or left because you won't. You need to go in the very middle, and you will make it. So that's what he did, and he made it. When he turned to give thanks to the guy, the guy wasn't there. So I am assuming probably there was an angel or someone who was able to lead this person on that. Now, you can lead me the same to do that with the trailer, and I'm not going to make it. Uh, it is known, and there is a lot of people making fun of me, a.k.a. Pastor Abdon Garza, that I cannot park between the lines at the ministry center. They make fun of me. Now, he's very respectful, and he says, we know you're the senior pastor. It's okay if you're taking two of those because you cannot find the two lines. And, and I think that at this point, I just have this PTSD about it because as soon as I go to the ministry center, I never can park in the right place. So what I learned is it doesn't matter if you have all this great car or so. There is a specific person that is key. It is, takes an expert to get the narrow road right. It takes an expert. It is not just anyone. And this is where we're coming today. Who is that mighty expert capable to take us to that narrow place? Who is that one who's capable to do that in the right place? And today we are remembering Palm Sunday. It's a beautiful Sunday of celebration, and it is when we shout Hosanna, when we start coming and saying that we are proclaiming Jesus our Lord and Savior, but he's walking to a place that is going to be difficult for all of us as Christians because we remember about what comes after that. Palm Sunday is one of those celebrations have, that have been part of the history of the church that we have shared for centuries. Actually, some of these are some of the first pictures that you can find telling and narrating the story of Jesus in a Palm Sunday. The one that you find in the left is actually in China. And was, that's one of the first drawings that you find as icons about the, the story of Jesus. So we have seen that it's part of our story and part of all of us. But the next thing that we need to ask now is that story of Jesus who came in a Palm Sunday to walk to Jerusalem, that is a story that is making an impact in our lives today. It took a mighty expert to go through that road so that we have an impact in our lives. So what is the different things that happen to us through that Palm Sunday? And one of the places where we can see that is actually in the letter of Corinthians that we read today. Now, if any of you remember about the Church of Corinthians, what do we remember about them? Were they nice, wonderful, everybody got along can they will sing Kumbaya at the end of service? No. This church, if there is a characteristic that we can call it, it was a messy church. Not like Northern Hills United Methodist Church at all. 
So they were messy, they were getting angry, in the, and they were, they were just conflictive. And one of the things that they were doing a lot is that they were going with the waves of fashion. So they were having Paul as the one who planted the church. And you know, Paul was a man that was dedicated to serve the Lord, no fancy to the point kind of guy. And then suddenly there were other preachers that were coming and they look all fancy and wonderful. So all the people of Corinthians, they were kind of gravitating to that new fashion of, of preachers. And they were questioning the ministry of Paul and they were questioning even his faiths and teachings. So in this process, what Paul is trying to do is to refocus them and say, guys, this is not about fashion. This is not about that this is now the preacher that is the new fashion right now. This is very different. You need to focus on what's really important. And what's important in here is the message of the cross. And that message and the results of that message for all of us. So he's starting to list what are those specific things that they need to remember at that. He first of all reminds, me, reminds us, and if we read on 2 Corinthians 5 at the beginning, he's telling them, you need to remember that you are clothed different. We are in this earth with this kind of body, but the beautiful thing that we need to remember is that we are clothed with something that is called eternal life. We are having that hope that comes to know that we start that eternal life today, but we are here just for a little bit. Un tiempito, we say in Spanish. Can you say that? Un tiempito. That means just for a little bit. Un tiempito. We are here, but then we have that eternal opportunity to be with the Lord. What a great good news for all of us to know about that eternal life through Christ. So, but he says, through this time, you are clothed by the Holy Spirit. It's the way that the Holy Spirit reminds you that while you're walking in life, you're not walking by yourself. He is with you. And then the second thing is that we are not just walking in the wilderness. We are walking how? By faith, not by sight. So we have a different way of approaching this world. And what he's telling them is because of Jesus taking that place, you and I are able to walk in a different place and in a different way. So the first thing that we need to remember is that that was not an easy route. It was very difficult. It took for Jesus to really look at us. And, I, and, and there is one part of the scripture that says, and he needed to take that resolution of going to Jerusalem. Remember that he was doing this as God, but also he was doing this as human. It was going to be hard, but he was able to do that because of the love for you and for me. And that put us in a different place. First of all, we need to remember that through this sacrifice, we are able to have new lenses. We see life very different. As many of you are wearing glasses and, and you see this experience of wearing glasses, you realize how glasses help you to see things different. I have shared with you before the story that when I came to this church, guys, I was 38 years old long ago. And I remember that I didn't need to wear glasses. And I discovered I needed to start wearing glasses because I start looking at the slides there and I start complaining to the worship leader who happens to be my husband and say, ¿Qué te pasa? ¿Por qué las mugrosas cosas que pones ahí no las puedo ver? What it means is I can see. So, and, uh, and I thought it was the slides. But no, then I went to the doctor, of the eye doctor, and he told me, no, it's you. You're getting old, soak it up and accept that. So I did, and now I have glasses. So, sorry, it wasn't said like that. It was a lot more polite. I apologize. So, anyway, but I realized it, the glasses help me to see things different. So, this is exactly what is Paul telling to all these people. I like a lot the translation of this section in the message. Look what it says. Our firm decision is to work from this focus center. That is, when it says our, it's y'all, okay? All of you here. Northern Hills United Methodist Church people, we, our firm decision is to work from this focus center. One man died for everyone. That puts everyone in the same boat. He included everyone in his death so that everyone could also be included in his life. Isn't that great? We were all included in that sacrifice. So we're all included in having that new life, a resurrection life, a far better life than people ever lived on their own. Because of this decision, we don't evaluate people by what they have 
or how they look. That is where Paul is defending himself. Like, guys, I look very different than the other nice, fancy preachers, but it's not about that. And then he says this, now we look where? Inside. And what we see is that anyone united with the Messiah gets a fresh start, is created new. That's where you and I are. We are called because of the opportunity that we have to be clothed with this promise of the eternal life with the Lord. Because we are walking in life with the Holy Spirit. He's holding our hand in our lives. And because we are walking not by what we see, but by faith, then we're able to see life different. We see things different. We are capable to take decisions in a different way because we can say, you know, my life looks different because of what God is giving us as an opportunity and how he is connecting us with this world and what is coming after that. You know, let me confess something to you. American humor and Mexican humor are very different. There are certain things that are very funny for Americans that for me, Mexican, I'm like, why is that funny? Or vice versa. I know there are times that I am like, what? That's so funny because I'm Mexican and Americans are looking at me are like, are you crazy? You know, I know sense of humor is different. And because of that, there are some actors that I cannot stand from the United States. I'm sorry, guys. But the guy from Nacho Libre, I, I can't stand that guy. What's his name? Jack Black, I just can't handle him as Kung Fu Panda, right? Then the other one that I cannot handle is Adam Sandler. I can, I just can. When I start watching a movie of him, I start having like hot flashes, <laughs> like I can't handle. And then there is another one, Jim Carrey, you know? Now, with the exception of one movie, this one. In this one, do you, I don't know if you know this movie. If you are Generation X, you know what I'm talking about. If you are younger than that, go and watch it. So it's called The Truman Show. You know what I'm talking about? It's the only movie that I like about him. And it is about this guy who is living in this false reality. And when he's watching and he's living that reality, suddenly he realizes this is fake. There is something real out there and he takes as a mission to be able to step out of that. When I think about that movie, I think a little bit about us as Christians. We are living in this world, but then we are aware because of how the Holy Spirit is guiding us. Because the fact that we know that our life here is just for un tiempito, that then we see life very different and we realize, you know, there is more out there. There is more than just what we experience in here. There is more about that just dream, living the American dream. There is more about that I just need to be happy, to be, to be a good person. No, there is more than that. We are not called, I have told you before, we are not called to be happy people. We are called to be joyful people. But joy is something that we receive because it's part of God's strength pushing us to a place of understanding the position that we have as God's creation. You and I are living as image of God. You and I are living knowing that, yes, sometimes the life in this place does not make sense. But we are with the hope of that eternal life and eternal celebration that we are receiving. So we see things different. We are not better than others. We're just seeing things different. And we are called to call those differences and say, you know, while you see this negative, God can use that for something good. In the moment, probably it doesn't feel like that. But we believe what God can do, even in difficult circumstances. Because there is another thing that we do, is we are new vessels. Each of you, each of us, we are new vessels. The same scripture that we read before, now look at this emphasis. Now we look inside. And what we see is that anyone united with the Messiah gets a what? A fresh start. It's created new. So we are kind of these new vessels. I love uh, what this professor says. Being reconciled to God indicates that God's Holy Spirit is at work to sanctify the reconciled into vessels of God's righteousness. Who are those vessels? You and me. You are an, a nice American vessel. 
I am a Mexican vessel with spice on it. Maybe in me, they put some salsa. Maybe in you, they put something else. But we are called to be different. Now, let me, let me tell you something that is important. We need to realize that when we are talking that we are a new creation, we are in process. We call that process of holiness. We are in that process of sanctification. However, there is an expectation that there is change in our lives. We cannot say that as a Christian, we are in the same place where we were at the beginning of our faith to when we are years later. We cannot. It's expected a change. A few days ago, I experienced that with a friend that I have. Several years ago, this friend came and she told me that her life was really in a lot of struggle. Her family was struggling with a lot of bad decisions that her children were taking at that point. And she just sat with me crying with her husband and saying, we do not know what to do. This is just getting really hard. We're very concerned about our children. We do not know if this is going to put them in jail one day, and we don't want that for them. And I remember that I told them, you know, guys, let's just pray for your family. Let's connect them with a church so they can start growing in their faith because I believe that a lot of the things that they are missing is just finding their identity in Christ. So they start going to a church that was very close to their house. And I stopped seeing her for a while. And then suddenly I saw her again. And she told me, you know, we are now going to church. Our children have changed. They are now involved in, in, in their own youth group. And they are learning to understand who they are in Christ. And I was very happy for her. But then just a few days ago, I found her again. From that woman that I saw years ago with this sad and concern on her face, I saw her with this big smile, and she is telling me every scripture she knows in the Bible every time she talked to me. And she says, you know, I'm a new creation. We are here living a life that is difficult, but you know, we have victory in the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, God brought us to be one day connected with you guys and with people of these churches because God knew that one day we needed to connect in a church so our family will be in a different place. And you know, now I proclaim around the world that he is the salvation, that he is the truth. And she just kept talking and talking about that. And then there was a moment when she just looked at me and she held my hands and she says, I want to pray for you. And then she starts praying for me. And guys, I could not stop crying because I noticed that the transformation for her was to the point that years ago I was the one praying for her in a moment of need. And now she is praying for me in a moment that she felt, you know, I need to pray for you with all the things that are going on. That is a new creation. That is the expectation for you and for me. And I want you to see that in your life. I don't care that probably you had a really creepy past. Maybe there were things that you did that were really wrong or out of reality. Maybe you took decisions that put you in a hole. Maybe you are right now struggling with different things in your life that is really difficult just to take the next step. But when we live as new creation, we live as people that know that are empowered by the Holy Spirit to take the next step. Maybe it's not going to be an easy next step. Maybe there are going to be challenges in there. Maybe our life is going to change residency. And I'm not just talking physical. I mean, I'm also talking spiritual. Regardless of what's happening, as new creation, we walk every step knowing the position that we have as children of God. I am not going to accept in your lives or mine to say three years later, we're in the same boat. We haven't matured as Christians. We are not going to get there because as Christians, we are called to grow. And we can do that because of the presence of God with us. God took that narrow place for you and for me. Amen. And then we are also called to be in new tension. Huh? Don't get scared about it. Don't leave me. Let me explain you why. New tension, because this is also in the message. The old life is gone, a new life emerges. Look at it. All this comes from the God who settled the relationship between us and him. 
and then call us to settle our relationship with each other. You see, that picture is from my backyard. And as you know, I struggle with plants, but the aloe veras have survived me, except on that snow, tsunami, storm, whatever that we have in San Antonio here a few weeks ago. And that plant that you see there that is dead, that one is the one that I had the less hope of survival even before the snowstorm. I'm like, it's in a place that it will never survive. So when I saw that plant dead, I realized, you know, it didn't surprise me. What surprised me is that none of the other plants who were in a better place survived or brought any other kind of life except that one. The one that I had the less hope is the one that is able to bring life again. And there are so many times when Jesus comes and looks at me and says, do you get the point? That there are times when you feel in some person or in yourself there is no hope on this. And that's what I bring life. Because it's not about your hope. It is about the power of the Spirit moving in that person. And it is what God is telling us. As a new creation, we are living a life that is different. And that brings tension. Because decisions that you took before, they probably were very popular because you were moving with people where those decisions are fine. But now that you are living a life in Christ, you're going to need to say no to things and that's going to put tension on you. You're going to need to learn to depend on God where before you were the one who were taking decisions. There are times when you're going to start suggesting, that's how I use the word, I suggest ideas to God for my calendar. Suggestions, Rebecca. And I'm just saying, God, in, in, my, in my human nature, this will make sense. What do you think? And there are many times when he looks at me and he's like, really, Rupina? I mean, no. And I'm thankful. I'm thankful that he says that. But those are the times when it creates that tension. For we need to accept that my life is not going to move anymore based on what I want or how I want it. But it's necessary because we are here as new creation. And the last thing is that we are new representatives. I like that uh, how he's called that we are all called to the ministry of reconciliation. And you see, this word, ministry of reconciliation, is probably one of the things that I sense that as a world, we are thirsty right now about the understanding of reconciling. And I think that the problem about that is that many times we think that the reconciliation needs to be between you and me, and that means we all need to agree on the same and somehow make it work. And that is not what God is calling us. The reconciliation is with Christ. Is that you and me come together to that place with Christ. And from there, we are able to say we're going to grow and mature. You see, I have a, I have a great husband. That one over there, Abel, right. I call him, as you know, my gringo. And, uh, but um, every now and then, we can have difficult conversations, right? Because one of us is stubborn, and I'm not going to mention who. But the other one is not stubborn. He's very patient and listens down here looking like this to the stubborn one who's shorter. And, uh, um, and there are times when I feel like, okay, are we going to get somewhere? And I have learned that if, if the discussion is just going in this direction, although in our family is this direction, <laughs> we got nowhere. You know, we're just going to get more angry because, again, that, that member of the couple that is stubborn is just getting more stubborn in that conversation. And then the other guy is just very patiently, but the patience is starting to get to a limit, and, and the conversation is not going to go anywhere. But when we come to a place of sin, it's not about us. It's about coming back to Christ. So it's when you say, you know, let's put Christ in the mix and put him in the middle. Then it's when that reconciliation happens because it is from that presence of Christ that love comes again. That forgiveness comes again. That the possibility of hope comes again. And then unity comes back. That is the ministry of reconciliation that you and I are called to give to this world. The Bible says we are Christ's representatives 
God uses us to persuade men and women to drop their differences and enter into God's work of making things right between them. So it is by just the fact that you are there as a representative of Christ that in that relationship, you're bringing the opportunity of reconciliation. And I'm not just talking about relationship of spouses in wherever you are. You are at work, you are at school. Just the fact that you are present in there, you bring the opportunity of reconciliation through Christ. You see, what uh, this lady wrote, wrote is, was in 2013. But I think we can write there 2021, and it's exactly the same thought. It says, God's righteousness is on the loose. God's kingdom has down. There are glimpses of God's new creation even in the struggling church of Corinth, or I will say in the struggling church at San Antonio, at the world. God's power to rectify simply cannot be contained. For a world held captive to all manifestations of sin's power, fear, anxiety, social injustices, war, starvation, exploitation, this is good news, good news indeed. To know that we have that available for you and for me. And because it is available, we can say today in 2021, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that it is you, the one who take that narrow road. And we are so thankful that through that, you put us in a new place. Now we are called your new creation, your ambassadors, your representatives. And by that, God, we are living a life that is very different than what we just see around the world. Lord, allow us to embrace what you have provided to live this life for all of us, to accept that advice of the Holy Spirit, to accept, God, that we are walking by faith. And through that, Lord, let us be able to show to others that you are that God that is coming to their lives too and reconcile them with them. God, we are thankful too, because first of all, you brought reconciliation from us to you, and you gave us the power of forgiveness and restoration. And God, now allow us to share that with others. And we are thankful, God. And we shout from the deepest part of our heart, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. We pray all of this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. As we enter into this Holy Week, there's a story of grace in this. As we learn about this road narrowing, as we learn about all that Christ has done, we, as we are reconciled to him, as, as we learn today, the story of Christ comes to not only have deeper meaning, but also transform our own lives. So I'd invite us to reflect on that as we sing this closing song together. As you can, let's stand together.
It is paid in full by the precious blood that my Jesus spilled. Now the curse of sin has no hold on me. From the sun sets free, oh, is free indeed. Now my debt is paid, it is paid in full by the precious blood that my Jesus that you came today to worship with us and those online we are so thankful that you connected with us and looking forward to see you today from two to six and during the week in the different worship services that are there please check in our website so you can have the information in there now let's receive this benediction now may we all remember that God took that special place that narrow gate for you and for me so we can be new creation we can be ambassadors and we can see this world in new eyes. May we all embrace that new place in Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you guys. Shalom. Love you.